Whoops. Talking to my people. Hey, I'm coming for you. I'm going to cut down this tree first. I don't play Fortnite. This is a PlayStation controller. I'm watching because I, I logged in and then went to the bathroom and because it, it was loading and then I died while I was in the bathroom. Today we're talking about a newly released pair of gaming headphones by Audio-Technica, the ATH G1 WL. Hi friends, if you're new around here, my name's Oliver. I like to talk about audio for video as well as filmmaking, those types of things. And as many of you know, I love headphones. So that being said, I've done lots of headphone reviews on this channel, whether a company from China sends them to me or I buy them myself and I do the review. I love headphones, I love comparing them, I love consuming music through headphones, making music in headphones, all of it. I was not paid to make this, so it's not an ad, it's a very unbiased review, but it is my bias towards these headphones, just not slanted in any direction towards the company. Audio-Technica reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to review their brand new gaming headphones, to which I said yes. Now, I'm not a huge gamer, but I did play a lot of PlayStation in January, February, March after Red Dead Redemption 2 was released. That was totally my game. Haven't touched that much since, but I am a headphone enthusiast, so I can give you some really good pointers on how these sound and how they function if you are a gamer and you're in the market for a really, really nice set of gaming headphones. What is cool about Audio-Technica is they're already an expert in all things audio. They make great headphones, they make great microphones and other audio equipment. As many of you know, my go-to field recording headphones are the ATH M50X, which is kind of their flagship. They're $150. They just sound excellent out in the field. I've replaced the ear cups because of all the use I've had with some nice velvety cool stuff and I just use those all the time. Now, these are modeled after those. Very similar shape, same size driver, and so I was really excited to check them out for gaming and how that application might work in an Audio-Technica sounding headphone. So they released two of these headphones at the same time, the ATH G1, which is a wired version, and the ATH G1 WL, which is the wireless version. I wonder if the WL stands for wireless. <laughs> Gotta keep it simple. So some key features you need to know about this. It is compatible only with computers. It does not work with a PlayStation, an Xbox, or another console. So the way the wireless works is you have a USB stick that is the receiver that gets the 2.4 gigahertz wireless signal to connect it to your actual computer. Now these have large 45 millimeter drivers inside them and those are pretty big. Those are the same size as the Biodynamic DT770's drivers. One of the things that can really indicate quality is the size of the driver in the headphone, so I was impressed by that. Now, something that's really interesting about these is they have that VST surround option. There's not actual 7.1 in there, that's just a way of saying that there's a digital enhancement that takes the two signals coming into your ears in stereo and makes it feel bigger, like it just enhances the sound stage. I liked this option, I always turned it on, when I, whether I was doing gaming on the computer or listening to music, it made everything feel a little bit bigger. Because these are right on your head, they're closed back headphones, and so again, they're gonna feel kind of tight. When you click that button, it does kind of enhance, it does kind of give it air to breathe, which is nice. I like that kind of technology to make things a little bit bigger. Now, we all know no gaming headset is complete without a microphone. So here's what that sounds like. Typical gaming microphone gets the job done. You just gotta be careful with your breathing. If you get it too close to your mouth, not only are you gonna have proximity issues, but <sighs> You know, when we're all out of breath and sweaty, trying to play Fortnite or whatever else you play on PC or Mac, you want to move it just back, just a little bit, like right to there. Then we're going to have a nice little signal to noise ratio and we're going to be able to breathe normally without clipping the mic. Cool thing about that mic is it's totally detachable. If you just want to listen to music from your computer with these headphones or work with them or whatever, pop that guy off and you're good to go. The G1WL comes with these buttons, tangible buttons on the side of the ear cup for volume control, muting your mic, surround sound controls, monitoring your mic, all of those are located right there on the left side of the ear cup, which is really cool. So Audio-Technica claims the internal battery lasts for 15 hours. I wasn't able to fully validate that, but I haven't had to charge it yet, and I've been listening to these for quite some time. So, no issues there. When you open up the box, you're gonna see the USB charging cable, the USB wireless transceiver, spare ear pads, just in case, you know, you, you wear them out with all that gaming, and also windscreen for the mic, which is really important because when you're breathing into these mics, you can kind of get poppy and clicky, and so you gotta pull that away from your mouth, put the little foam windscreen on it, keep yourself safe. Now some of the specs about these two, some of the more uh, intangible specs is they're very light. They, they, they just rest on your head, which is so important if you're gonna be wearing any sort of a headphone for a long time. I always talked about this when I was doing the Bose quiet comfort thing, like those were so valuable to me because of how light they were. Lighter is better because it's not gonna weigh you down, it's not gonna start to hurt your ears, it doesn't clamp your head that hard like the HD280 Pros by Sennheiser, nor is it super, super heavy like the Neurophones. It was just nice and light. The ear pads were coated in kind of a cloth thing, very comfortable, very squishy, all good. 
So now to the subjective part. I always ask three questions whenever I review anything, especially headphones. How do they sound? How do they function? And what do they cost? So how do they sound? Now here's the thing about headphones. Sound in headphones can tend to be pretty subjective, especially if you've been conditioned by something else before you listen to it. So if I go put on my Bayer Dynamics and then I try these out, they're gonna sound different than putting on the MPALs and then putting these on, if that makes any sense. So like, when I do that Law of Diminishing Returns graph, these sound pretty good. They have everything you would need. I was impressed with the bass. The bass wasn't attacking me. It wasn't super intense and muddying things up. It felt clear and it felt right when I heard gunshots in Fortnite or in Red Dead Redemption or anything like that. I liked the bass. The high end was crisp. It felt a little bit tuned, meaning the, the, the drivers are good, but maybe they're not producing the full color of frequencies that I'm used to. They're more of those blocky colors of frequencies. I did this thing about a rainbow in the last headphone review to recap that. All the colors are being presented in these headphones, but they're a little bit blockier. There's like 12 colors instead of 64 colors within that spectrum. That's the way I like to look at the EQ curve, is like color. So we've got our colors, you know, the yellow's boosted and the red's boosted, but there's not this like gorgeous mosaic of red fading to yellow the way that some headphones can be like when they reproduce sound. These were totally adequate though. Now what was interesting to me is they didn't sound exactly as good or exactly the same as the ATH M50X. I figured that those would kind of be the same thing. This might have been just that with the headset and the transceiver. Totally wasn't. It was a lot more compacted, the sound, compared to the M50Xs. And again, the M50Xs being closed back headphones, they're gonna feel like they're right on your face. They're not gonna feel big and breathable the way some headphones do. These were a little bit more on my, right on my head. Now, when I hit the VST button, that expanded a little bit. Didn't change much of the EQ curve, but it did make me feel a little bit more in the world of whatever I was listening to. So again, the bass was really nice, really clear, was not muddying up. This, the low mids were okay, they felt a little muddy, kind of reminded me of the Sony WH-1000X Mark IIs. The high end is nice, it doesn't feel natural, it feels a little bit forced, but uh, again, gunshots and footsteps and uh, 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 the hammering sounds and the horse sounds and all the things that I was listening to as I was going through some of the games that I play or games that are really popular, I was totally, like it's totally adequate. In fact, it was better than average. So if you're a gamer and you're interested in sound and you want a really good pair of wireless headsets, I would say go for these. Now, how do they function? We already really covered this. They function fine. Sitting there with the stick plugged in, I never had any drops in the audio. Everything worked just perfectly fine. I plugged it in, the Mac recognized it right away. We were good to go. And then what do they cost? 250 bucks. So 250 is pretty steep, but when it comes to a high quality pair of lightweight, durable, and trustworthy headphones, I say that's kind of a steal. I could see Audio-Technica pushing them a little bit more. I could also see an argument for why they shouldn't be as expensive as $250 at all. Because I feel like the $150 pair of passive headphones, the ATH M50X, sounded better than these, the ATH G1WL. But there are so many features packed into these that make that price point more reasonably higher. Some of the things like the VST 7.1 surround emulation to the microphone, to the wireless nature of the whole thing, to the mutes, to all the fancy things that go into it, I understand why it's a little bit more expensive. So 250, they sound good, they function great, they're 250 bucks. Are you a gamer? Go buy them. So, that concludes my review. Thank you again Audio-Technica for sending these out. I so appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else, leave them in the comments below. Let's discuss, and I will see y'all next time.